in year 10, it's Mr. Byrne here and I'm going to be talking through your next conflict and tension lesson. But as always, we're going to start with some medicine revision. So what I'd like, if your surname starts with the letters A to M, can you do the green question, please? If your surname starts with the letter N to Z, could you do the red question for me then, please? So we'd like to pause here and do our starter task. OK, that should have gave you enough time to get those tasks done. What we're going to have a look at first then is your green question. So if you did about Robert, the German, what we're going to have a look at is what he actually did. So he is a microbiologist. He believes in bacteria staining to try and remove bad bacteria and get rid of the bacteria that harms us. So he builds on the work of Louis Pasteur. He develops vaccines for such things as rabies and anthrax. And he does a lot of testing to try and make his manufactured items work. So he's not necessarily a theorist. He's more someone who practically wants to get involved with the removal of bad germs and diseases. If you did the red question, you were doing Louis Pasteur. He is more of a theoretical thinker and moves into implementation. Main thing you need to have spoke about with Louis Pasteur is 1861 and germ theory. And Louis Pasteur was really important because he changes the whole mindset away from miasma to germ theory. And he does things such as pasteurization to do with milk that we've looked at. And he even looks into vaccines such as one against like chicken cholera. OK, so just to get that medicine brain going. But as always, like I've said, that's just to get our brains working and remembering different modules. OK, so today's lesson is on the League of Nations and international relations. So if you'd like to pause here and write that title that's underlined in black for me. So moving into today's lessons, we're going to look at international relations. And all that means is how different countries in the world made agreements with each other. Your history teacher should have sent you this sheet on the left hand side. And we are going to try and explain how international agreements led to people disarming or rearming their militaries. And don't forget, disarming means removal of military. Rearming means to make your military bigger or stronger. Don't worry if you don't have this sheet. We're going to go through it. So it'll be on my screen and I will pause just in case you need to. And what I'd like you to do, just jot down these two extended thinking questions here because they're going to really help you build up those strong, higher level answers. The first one we're going to look at then is the Locarno Treaty of 1925. So what I would like you to do over the next four slides, I'm going to give you some information about what it is, pros and cons, and you're going to jot down information for me. The first one we're going to look at is the Locarno Treaty of 1925. And that was when French and German governments met in Locarno, Switzerland, and they signed seven treaties in which Germany officially accepted the borders that had been defined by the Treaty of Versailles. And they gave up to claims to areas such as Alsace-Lorraine, which is a big deal because Germany is no longer competing to try and get stuff. They also agreed to work together and sort out any disputes peacefully. So we're moving away from these violent solutions into peaceful negotiation. And the treaty was also signed by Italy, Britain, Belgium and Czechoslovakia, which shows that other countries think this is quite a good idea. And each country agreed that they would not go to war with any of the others. And they all agreed if any country broke the agreement, they would support the country that was invaded. So back to our idea of collective security. We're going to gang up on anyone that breaks the rules and starts to act out and be violent. What is good about this then? It's very significant as the Germans lost that fear now. They don't feel vulnerable from French attacks because they are negotiating and having discussions with the French. And many felt this agreement ended the anger of the Germans because they willingly got to choose to sign this agreement. They weren't forced like they felt in 1919. A lot of other countries saw this as Germany trying to become more peaceful and moving away from those aggressive associations. And some say this agreement shows that Germany was sorry enough or ready enough to be part of the League of Nations. The negatives then. However, some historians saw this as a failure for the League 
as they were not a leading figure in the discussions. Also, they were not leading the discussions. They're not getting involved. These are discussions that are being done outside of the league's control, which is big because it shows the league to be weak and it's easy to make agreements without them. So if you need to, pause the video here and add in any additional notes. The second one we're going to look at then is the kellogg Briand Pact of 1928. So what is this? This is where 65 countries met in Paris and agreed they would not use war as a means of solving disputes. So we're not going to fight to end our problems. And Stresemann of Germany and Briand of France were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for recognition of the work they had done to heal the wounds of World War I. This is really important because what that does is it brings out that peaceful negotiation and it makes other countries want to get involved. And the first countries that were involved in this discussion were Germany, France and America. And since two of these were not in the League of Nations, it was recognised this had to be done outside of the League. Positives then. This demonstrates that a large amount of countries could act together without the League. We can all be grown-ups and we can get this done by negotiation. However, the negatives is the pact made the League, the league look like a place to just go and tell people your problems. We won't actually get any solutions, we can just go and moan. So the League doesn't look practical at solving problems given. Again, if you need to pause the video, just do it at the end of each slide. Third one then is the Rapallo Treaty of 1922. And this is when Russia left World War I, they were forced to sign a treaty with Germany called Brett's Litsuvik. And this took away vast quantities of land and forced Russia to pay Germany huge sums of money. But in 1922, Russia and Germany met in a neutral country. So they met in Italy in a place called Rapallo to sign a new treaty and agreement. And both countries agreed that Germany would return the money they had paid and give, be given back land that they had taken from Russia. So it's this idea we are giving things back to their rightful owners. And both of these countries secretly agreed that Germany could manufacture and test weapons in Russia. This is good for the Russians because they are able to gain Western intelligence and finances. And the Germans are going to like this because they can bypass the Treaty of Versailles and build up their military, even though they shouldn't really be doing that. And what it showed was both countries agreed to work in cooperation with each other in the future, even though they'd previously been enemies. Positives of this. This demonstrates that countries who were previously opponents could cooperate and work together with each other. This is really important because it proved that countries were following the League's principles of working together to come up with solutions moving forward. So the idea that this league is this big pinnacle that shows everyone what to do, and though they may not be involved, they are demonstrating the right mindset to take. However, the negatives is again, is made outside of the League of Nations. And the reason this treaty had to be done outside of the League of Nations was the sheer fact that neither of them were in the league. And after they had not been allowed to join the League, they had to come up with solutions without the League's help. And Germany could actually go against the League now and they could break the Treaty of Versailles, one of the key principles of the ended World War I, because they can now build and test weapons in Russia, secretly breaking those military terms. The final one then, we're going to look at the Washington Arms Conference. And arms is just another name for like military. So it's like a military technological term. So the arms conference was set up and held by America. Hence, it has to be done outside of the league because America is not in the league. And major countries like Britain, Japan, USA and France attended to discuss how big navies could be or what they could be set up as. And it was decided that Britain and France could have uh, Britain and the USA could have the same size navies. And for every five tons of battleship that the USA and Britain had, Japan could have three tons. Why is this a positive then? This was good for the, the League as it demonstrated that nations could collaborate together and talk through their ideas. It also demonstrated that some countries were willing to negotiate and make concessions to avoid war. 
This then gives the nations the opportunity to keep their nation safe by preparing defences. So these aren't attacking terms, these are defensive terms. So it's keeping everybody safe rather than being aggressive. However, the negatives. One of the main aims of the League was to disarm. You were supposed to be getting rid of your militaries. However, this is a clear violation because navies are being built up. They are being made bigger. And the fact that Britain, France and Japan attended as individual countries rather than sending representatives from the League shows how poor their attitude was to the League of Nations. It's a massive sign of disrespect that they went as their individual countries and not as a group from the League of Nations. So that's the key information then. What we're going to try and do now, we're going to try and implement them to the sources. So you should have a sheet that looks like this, and we're going to analyse two sources together. And we're going to annotate and make notes around in these additional boxes at the side of the sources. Our job then, as we analyse these sources, is was the League helpful at getting people to disarm? And we're going to see some representation of what people thought. So the first one we're going to have a look at is this one. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the provenance, so where the sources come from. It's come from the Daily Express in 1934, and the singer is supposed to be France, and France had proposed an alliance with the USSR which is Russia. And what we're looking at now is others' reaction to this idea of France and Russia making an agreement. So first of all, you can see we are fully mocking the French, making them in a silly outfit, making them look feminine, and they are not looking like a strong leader that they were supposed to be. We can also see the international agreements are on the floor. They're like being trodden upon. But that shows the disregard to these things. And in the background, it's supposed to be a musician, but the violin is actually a tank, is what it looks like. So it looks aggressive. It looks like rearming. And we have this idea that it's a mockery towards France. We also need to see how the other countries reacted. So when we look around the outside, there's different countries. And what we need to say is, what is it trying to say about these countries? So the first thing you're going to have a look is Moscow. It's Russia. They look quite happy. They're saying bravo. And they are saying how good this could be. So this bubble is making the Russians uh, quite happy in the agreement. However, I wouldn't say the Russians look very technologically advanced. In the next one, we've got Rome and Mussolini. And the fact that he's saying, take it away. So the Italians are disregarding it. And as we know, the Italians were big in the League of Nations. So this is a big, big push, pushing away from one of the key players. Next is Poland. They are saying it is impossible. They hate the fact they look head in hands and they are feeling like they should be protected from the Russians. And they feel like this is putting in the firing line. Next of all, we have a picture of Adolf Hitler. And he is not just disregarding the message that is coming out of the radio. He's actually shooting it. And that shows the aggression. That shows that the Germans are building up their armies and they are willing to shoot something if they dislike it. So again, it's not making the league look very good here. A lot of the ones we've looked at so far don't think what the league is doing is very good. And finally, we've got London. And they say, how touching, but I dare not commit myself. So that shows Britain isolating themselves away. They think it's a good idea, but they're not getting involved for the sheer reason they don't want to commit. And we know Britain is having financial difficulties because of the Great Depression in the 1930s. However, this doesn't make them look good. So all around here are quite negative images and they are mocking the League's ability to bring peace to the world. So overall, this is a negative source. Most things here show that the League of Nations is not a good peacekeeper. And it's very derogatory in the language and pictures of how it represents the League. So on to your next source now. 
we're looking at the idea of creating disarmament. So we can see Europe, who is being dressed as a lady here, heading towards disarmament. And we can see that the eyes are facing. We all have a common goal. There are not loads of individual countries like they were in the previous one. It is trying to call Europe together. OK, and what we can see is here they are heading in that direction. And the only way they are heading towards disarmament is through these stepping stones. And the stepping stones are called the Doors and the Locarno. And from what we know, from what we've studied in the Germany module and the conflict module, these were things that were negotiated by the League or negotiated by people that were in the League. So even though the League didn't come up with the Locarno Treaty, some of its key members did. So what it's saying is the League has now taught nations in the world to create stepping stones to head towards disarmament. However, because there's such a big gap between Locarno and disarmament, we can see that we are not quite there. However, what we could say with this source here is that we are heading in the right direction. We are taking the right steps to get people to go to disarmament. And finally, it's saying, and now the next step. So it's saying we need the League to push us towards the next step or give us a hint of how we move from one treaty, the Locarno, to disarmament. So this is a more positive approach, not quite necessarily saying the League has done everything, but it's saying the League is helping shape and mould the world to head in the right direction of disarmament. So what I'd like you to do now is we're going to have a go at applying this information from the two sources and what we've learned today in an exam question. So can you write this exam question on the screen for me and bug it? If you've paused the video, that should give you enough time now then. So I'm just going to show you what I would have underlined and gone around here. So we've got ideas that we're looking at usefulness. We've got to talk about both sources. And we're looking at the failure of the League of Nations. OK, so we're looking at how they say that it has not solved the problem of disarmament. OK. So what I've done is I wrote a model answer of a paragraph. And what I wrote here is. I think that source C is really useful in showing that the League was a failure in its mission to disarm. So straight away, I've said whether it's useful or not. Not saying whether I like it, I'm saying that it is useful. To support this, I can see in the source that Hitler is shooting the radio broadcasting disarmament and Mussolini is turning the radio off so he doesn't have to listen. So what we can see there is I've given some evidence from this source from the two pictures showing how they have failed to get disarmament. And these examples show that even though leading members of the League of Nations, such as France, were encouraging peaceful solutions, other big countries were ignoring the messages and ideas. So then what I've tried to do is I've tried to explain why I picked these two parts of the source app. Also, I can see it states the Eastern Locarno on the French singer's clothes, which demonstrate he is trying to create a peaceful agreement with Russia like they did with Germany and the other countries in the Locarno Treaty of 1925. However, the treaty says Germany won't use force to deal with problems or ideas they don't agree with. However, Hitler is using a gun to shoot down the idea telling us the previous work by France didn't work. So what I've then done is I've extended my answer to demonstrate why it's not useful, why it is so useful. The idea that Hitler is shooting something completely goes against the idea of disarmament. If Hitler agreed with it, he wouldn't have shot it. If Hitler was following the principles of the League of Nations, he would not have fired a weapon. So instead of moving away from disarmament, we can see that countries have actually moved more towards rearming and having huge militaries. But that is only one of the sources that I've looked at. So I've just looked at source C there. However, in the question, you have to look at both sources. So you have to look at source B and source C. So what we need to have a go at now is I'd like you to have a go at doing this question. And I've put some prompts on here of what you should put in paragraph one, paragraph two and paragraph three. And what I'd like you to do from this, please, is send your teachers 
uh, your answer so they can have a look at how you've applied your knowledge to the sources to answer this exam style question. Thank you for listening. Stay safe and I'll see you again soon.